So, so we're here. It's your neighbor's hood. Yeah. And we are doing a special edition holiday. Or no, not holiday. October. Halloween edition. Halloween. Before we get to that though, what is good in your hood? Dang, I didn't even prepare for this, which I feel like I should have. Um, you want me to go first? Yeah, I'll I know think about it. In mind. I was just at a, um, a conference called Evolving Faith, and I mm -hmm. got to see one of my favorite authors. One of the first authors we oh, ever read right. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. her name's uh, Austin Channing Brown. And she wrote a book called, I think, oh my gosh, I always forget it. I'm Still Here. Um, Black Dignity and a World Made for Whiteness, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, she was incredible. She talked about racial justice, the importance of it. Um, and how the church can be involved. She's, I think she's, she's also a pastor. So. Oh, what? Yeah. She, I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's so, she's amazing. She's my favorite speaker. Um, and there was like a line, two hour line to chat to her so I didn't get to. You didn't get to see I really her. Wanted I wanted to. I wanted you to because I wanted her. to see like, what is she like? Uh -huh. well, she seems really nice and just a powerful preacher. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, so that was incredible. That was just a great, um, and I was in Asheville, North Carolina, so that's always beautiful. Um, and I just got back a couple days ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Girl. That's a highlight. That's, that's good. That's a highlight. Life. That is awesome. And you also went with friends. I did. For high school so friends. that's. Yeah. It was really cool because we were just always trying to evolve and we're faith-based and learn how we can be more progressive and mm -hmm. bring faith into um, 2018. 2018, yeah. girl. Yeah. I was raised with some, I think some just unhealthy ideas of faith and um so it was kind of great to heal some of that you know? feel it you feel do you feel healed i do i feel like there's a space for me in the church because mm. i always felt like there weren't my I, my the things i believed um didn't line up with a lot with of the what? churches that i went to and so now it's like wow there's like three thousand people here so i am <laughs> not alone yeah. you are not alone oh, i love it yeah that's michael is it i am here oh. with you <laughs> perfect that song goes oh, perfect God. yes sing it for me All girl right. Yes. So what's good in your hood? Okay, so I'm thinking about my weekend. Yeah. And what's good in my hood is we are back to um, family meetings. Mm -hmm. We've been having them every week, which yeah. I love, love, love. Yeah. Like, I feel like we have so much order, good order and discipline. Yeah. When the kids yeah, are, like, in line. Oh, my love. goodness. It's so good because my son says, I watched him make his schedule last week because That's the kids, awesome. they plan their schedule. For him, it's not. Oh, he doesn't like it. He, no, he's scheduling it. And I noticed, like, he stacked everything on Sunday. And I'm like, well, Sunday's the day we meet. So, right. bro, like, what are you doing? Yeah. And when we came to him, we talked about how many chores you had versus how much stuff you got done. Uh-oh. So, Zahara is like, okay, I had 11 chores. There were three of them that I didn't get done because of X, Y, and Z. Right. We talked about like, why, yeah. whatever. Duran is like, well, I had 11 chores or responsibilities, because I don't like to say chores. 11 responsibilities, and I didn't get eight of them done. <laughs> ah! Why is that? He was like, well, I think that I set myself up for failure because I scheduled mostly everything on Sunday, thinking I would be able to get it done on Sunday, but Do maybe, it all 11 in Sunday? Is that what he's trying to do? That's what he did. So he's like, I was using, you know, like kid logic. And I was like, and can I have my weekends with you? Can you be my child? I like love you. Like, can I have weekends? So he was like, well, um, I think I just did a really bad job planning this week. I That's said, kind of the point, though, is you're trying to teach him. Yes. I get it. Yeah. I told time him management. 90% of his problems are time management problems. Yeah. 90%. So he's learning, but it's good to learn now. He's only mm -hmm. 12. So. Yeah, and I just had to ask him. I was like, oh, wow, well, look at this. Yeah. If you're not getting, if you're, if you only got three of the things I needed you to actually, was it three? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, that's my math. Quick, <laughs> quick math. You only got three of the things that were required of you done. Yeah. And then you're also missing an assignment in school. What sort of consequences are you bringing your way? Right. So like you had to reflect on both sides, and right. it's like to have data. Yeah. To go. <laughs> well, to show him, like, okay, this is you know we we tried. Yeah. And yeah. And we didn't succeed. <laughs> so what are we gonna do yeah. next week? My husband was like, I see what you're doing. You're sneaking these meetings up on us again. We're starting this. I was like, yes, we are. How does your husband feel about them? Um, I think he doesn't like them until it gains, like, fruitful things. Right. Like, he's just he like, sees. I don't want to be sitting here. And But he, like, no, because when we're in the meetings, he's really happy to see the awakening that the, the children girls. have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think he's just like, uh, because he doesn't get much time off. Sure. So he's like, I'm happy to have my own time. 
but he doesn't want to sit there all day because they used to take forever. But now it's about an hour. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, it can be if you're listening to Zahara talk. She just doesn't stop. <laughs> oh, I have something to add. Oh, I want to say something like, oh my you're God. You're like, okay, oh you're done. You're not, that's, yeah. You got your time. You, if you don't get it in this amount of time, you're you done. don't know. You don't I know. I could see that. Yeah, she <laughs> she does. But yeah, I think that was the highlight is yeah. that my kids are reflecting very well on their processes. That's awesome. So the work is being it's done. Work, it's, it's working. It's working. Oh, work I can't do working. that. We're at a table. Oh, yeah. I gotta make sure. Christine is so gorgeous. Look at her. Thank you. Look at her. Well, if I'm, we gotta be really close because we're in a corner. Yeah, we're in a kitty corner. Um, so. So I do have to shout out Cafe Stella because this is where we met. So. Yeah, this is where we're met. We're back on where we had our yeah. first date. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> what is it? 1907 Colonial Avenue. Yes. Good little coffee shop. Good little coffee so. shop. Well, today, girl. Yeah, we got a good question from a viewer, which we love. Mm -hmm. Or not viewer, a uh, listener. Listener, yep. Um, about blackface. About blackface. In light of Megan. What is her name? I can't think of her last name. Right Megan now. Kelly. Thank you. Um, who has a, a show. She has a talk show. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, what did she say? She said that the, the poli Halloween police were out. And she thought it wasn't, um, she didn't see a problem with um, blackface. Yep, yep, and so we need to talk about And she lost her job. <laughs> her show was canceled. $69 million in th three years. I mean, one comment she lost. I mean, we'll, we're not getting into the court of public opinion at all, whether yeah. that was right or wrong, but um, well, we're she should have known better. But anyway, so the woman was asking a very poignant question. What is wrong with blackface if your intentions are good? Like she asked about Aretha Franklin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, if we're honoring someone that we really look up to. So we're going to do it. We're going to talk about it. Oh, and if people don't know what blackface is, it's where a white person or paints person their face black. black. Mm -hmm. For a costume, for what God knows. For what whatever reason. reason. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it. We Let's are. do it. We are. I'm doing this because this is where we're going to uh, look. We're making great time. Yeah. 30. We're, we've got our intros down to... Well, take away two minutes because we have two minutes, of, but that's really good. That is good. We've got really our good. intro under like 10 minutes, which I love. So here we go. All right. Back into it. Back into it. So we're sitting here. Yes. Cafe Stella. Yes. We'll I talk like about blackface. Yes. And Halloween because Halloween is this week. Yeah. It's so costuming. Yeah, costuming. Like why? Are you dressing up for Halloween? I'm not. I don't really celebrate Halloween. Me neither. I mean, it's nothing. I'm not against it. I just don't. Yeah. I've never. I wasn't allowed to celebrate it growing up. Yeah. Uh, religious. For religious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it just. I never got into it in college. I never got into it afterwards. And I don't go to parties where there's a lot of drinking. So yeah. you know what I mean. Like so. Yeah. No, I'm not. My kids tend to think like Halloween is where they can get their discount outfits for the year. Oh, that's fun. So like once everything goes on sale, yeah. they're like out trying to buy awesome. costumes for the year because yeah. they wear costumes year round. I swear my... Yeah, your daughter runs in a cape. I feel that's so funny. <laughs> anyway, yes. So, like, this is like, this is like bargain shopping. Right. November 1st. It's right. like, let's go out to the... That's pretty good. That's smart. I mean, that's smart. Good stuff on the I can't stand them. But the, the seriousness is really yeah. about, you know, people and their understanding of blackface. Yes. And, and we, so... To do that, we have to go to history. Yeah, you, you, you have to, you definitely have to get connected to history. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem that I have, and I'm going to just say this, I literally had to sit down and talk to myself about this sure. because it is so, it's, it's a very frustrating um, concern because it's attached to so many different things, right? right? So it's not just about the blackface for me. Right. It's something that's attached to like a bazillion other absolutely, things. Absolutely, not just for you. I mean, his, yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, for, I'm just saying it. why I have to. So if yeah. I'm looking over here, it's because like I had to talk about it, then listen to myself talk about it, then take notes so that we can come from a place of growth. Right, absolutely. Rather than like, this is yeah. dumb. Yeah, because if you don't know history, you don't know. You don't know. So that's what we're here today to give you some knowledge. Yeah, so the truth is, is that blackface was... It was truly meant to humil humiliate, humiliate and, and dehumanize, and dehumanize and perpetuate this image of black people that we are stupid, that um, our physical and you know our personality features were like you were inferior. were meant to be funny. Yeah, and caricature. You were were considered. It's, it was. It's a way to 
to show the absolute worst of... Yeah, and that they, you guys were inferior in every way. Absolutely. And so people would do something called, I think, called minstrel shows. Minstrel with an eye. Minstrel yes. eyes. And, yeah, minstrel shows, which White is where... people would paint their faces and go on stage and mock black people. Absolutely. Mock them and then also put them down as, as inferior um, across the board any way that you can think of. Um, and this, what, when was this? The 1800s probably? 1800s. Eight, like, 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 1840s. Yeah, yeah like 20, 20 and 21st century. Yeah. Here's the deal, though. Like, the father of, of blackface, his name is Thomas Dartmouth Rice. He was also known when he was in blackface as Jim Crow. So do you understand, like, that blackface is... It's attached to so many other things. It shaped white people's, excuse me, European Americans' paradigm of black people. Right. Still yeah, to exactly. this day. So that's what the history is, and that's one of the many reasons it's so inappropriate because, and I, um, it's just they as a justification for violence. I was reading an article on that, and I, I didn't even think about it. And it starts with dehumanizing people, mm -hmm. um, so that way we see them then less than, so that way we don't feel as bad when we oppress them when we have violence and that's why it's still so harmful even if you have good intentions with it uh the history yeah it. yeah it, it's mocking my it was a mocking of of black people for things that were created by european americans like the 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 the, the menstrual speak is why because we were not educated we were not allowed to be educated without fear of repercussions we weren't even allowed to communicate so it's making fun of this, uh, uh, yes, and that's, yeah, uh, uh, because we're learning a language that was not our own right. and you're taking it and you're poking at us for something. Yeah. And I'm saying us because these, you know, I try to detach, but I do feel connected to my Absolutely. history that it, yeah. it was a making fun of us. And it was, it was a problem that was caused by. Right. And it was also um, perpetuated by white people. So we came up with the stereotypes. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They we yeah. came up with them and then reinforced them yeah. through blackface. It was on it was in cartoons. It was in TV. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is that it was entertainment only for white people. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Like it, at that point in time, black people were not allowed to go to shows. We weren't watching these shows. It was for your own personal entertainment not your particularly but european americans own entertainment right. uh of black people mm. and so it, it it was used i just feel like it was just it was those private conversations that we talk about nowadays about how dumb black people are right. about how hilarious yeah who they are and what do we say it's, to the people that say even if it's meant to be appreciating of someone's culture you know i mean it's hard um, no, <laughs> I just say, I just say no, because, um, yes, blackface was meant to be like funny initially, but when I look at, um, when I look at, if I want my daughter to dress up as Elsa for Halloween or she's, I don't paint her face white, right? I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Wow. Yeah. You know, when, when, when. When my son wants to dress up a Batman, I don't paint the bottom portion of his face white. You can appreciate someone's culture without saying that. I mean, I, I just feel like it's this the the our innate blackness is associated with our success in the same way, if not in the same way that whiteness is associated with success. So yes. it's like I have to paint myself black. Mm. Why do you feel like you got? Why is there a need? Right. to do that it's really not necessary right. you can or if we take um um huff what was her name julian huff she dressed, julian she dressed up as i forget some one of the black characters in orange is the New yeah black. so she wanted to dress up as crazy eyes right yes and so when she wanted to dress up as crazy eyes could she not have put on an orange jumpsuit yeah. put her hair in bantu knots and then took some of those lines that crazy eyes so that's says not bad then to dress up as a black person and no, just wear the costume you, without yes. painting your face i didn't think about that you can appreciate i just posted on my instagram this young yeah, I lady aquafina and she's hilarious like the girl is hilarious she was yeah. in crazy rich age asians yeah. but okay. people are dressing up like her for yeah. halloween this girl did and i'm like the girl she dressed up as aquafina but guess what she didn't do she didn't tape her eyes back to make herself look more asian because you can still have fun with the costume <laughs> wouldn't you think that would offensive if the girl had to Abs tape it oh my god absolutely so why is it black <laughs> why are we it's having the same thing it is yeah. the same thing it's just you can appreciate someone else's culture who they are 
what they are without having to paint yourself well, as and them. Something I, I also realized, we talk about intent versus um, impact all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, white people say, well, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm really not. I don't feel racist. But that also doesn't diminish, that doesn't mean that you aren't impacting black people that may experience it or see it on social media. You know what I mean? No, no. It doesn't, it does not mean that we don't still know that, that. That's what I'm, yeah. Yeah. That there's not, not an impact. Like I feel, I mean, it it makes my stomach turn a little bit. And, and understanding that for years and years and years, if you want to look at it from our current day standpoint, you're not going to see, have there been black people who have done whiteface? Absolutely, Eddie Murphy, Snoop Dogg did it, Nick Cannon did it, David Chappelle did it. But in their, in their childhood lives, in their adult lives, and the way they, we grew up, we never painted ourselves white right. to be or to celebrate white historians, right. white culture. Right. You know, like they're never, throw yourself on a wig, right. put on the outfit, and be that person. Right. Why can't why can't that be reciprocated? Why is there a need? And why do I why does it have to be explained? To me, it's like it goes back to the fact that it's like the oppressor saying what's oppressive. Yeah. And it's like the offender saying what's offensive. That we don't get to decide. Why do why can we not just say if 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 yeah, if, if I say it's offensive. Yeah, if it's offensive to me, let it be that. But then um, something I wanted to bring up is like, because people will say, oh, you know, I didn't know or I don't know. Then the, priv- the privilege of you not knowing or the, the reason you don't know is your privilege. You see what I'm saying? You, you don't have to. I mean, I wish you did, but white people don't have to look up the history and you can be lazy and just yeah. be angry when someone tells you not, not to look it up. You get to, you. I mean, as European Americans do have the luxury of ignoring what doesn't affect them. Yeah. And we don't necessarily, yeah, exactly. we don't, we don't necessarily, we don't, we don't have that. You don't um, have that privilege. Mm-mm. And, and I would even go so far as to say it, it, it is frustrating. I think for me from a place of it's, it's our media, it's our children, these sorts of conversations, because when we look at what media has done, for the idea of blackface. You've, the, I think the biggest controversy with blackface was, um, not biggest, but p- past times, if we're going historical and then walking our way forward, is when um, Lawrence Olivier played Othello. Othello was black, right? Okay. And and to say that there are no, there were no black people- That were qualified that were to, quali- yeah. That, and blackface has been used to not only s- subjugate black folks, but to take away employment opportunities. Mm. Yeah. So it's like the reason why these things were done was because why would I hire a black actor when I could just paint a white actor black and then get the job done? So it's it's layered on the the making fun of the taking away of opportunities and and looking at and looking at the sort of things when we're you know the, the idea of why can't it just be offensive is like, again, you get to determine what is or isn't. So when Amanda Steinberg plays Rue in, what is it, the Mockingbird? I can't even think of it. Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. White people can say that's offensive because it's, you feel like, or European Americans can say it's offensive because you feel like, hey, that character was meant to be white. Right. But it's okay, it is okay for, it is okay, it's always okay for the reverse. Right. It's like, there, there is, European Americans get to decide what's appreciated, what's not. Right. They get to decide what's acceptable, what's not. And when it comes to blackface, it's not just about the painting of the face, it's about the fact that why can't other cultures be appreciated right. at the same way that, that, that we appreciate well, yours. Also- the problematic is when white girls wear Indian costumes, you know, in the headdresses. That's been a long obsession of yeah. white girls for Halloween. And I think something that I came across was, you know, um, in, in reading an article was, why don't we know? And then you need to ask yourself, why aren't you aware of this? And why do you get defensive, you know, when someone tells you that, it, that it, this is offensive to their culture? Yeah. You know, because that happens a lot. People we just try and see it from our own point of view and mm-hmm. we really should be trying to ask ourselves what impact is this costume having on these cultures? Yes, because yeah. these sort of things, 
walking and you talking about Indian costumes and we're talking about minstrel shows. Yeah. These were things that European Americans used to also indoctrinate their children into society. Right, and those get passed down. Thank so you. The, we just finished an, ep an episode interviewing a professor and we were talking about stereotypes mm -hmm. of black, black um, or people of color being more um, cr criminalized, you know, uh, being more dangerous, uh, mm -hmm. when in reality they aren't. No. <laughs> it's just these stereotypes have been passed down, hence why blackface is so dangerous. It is we so make a joke about it, but it's, it's really funny. Serious. It's meant to be funny, and it's always funny. You can't tell me that that when they when you when people saw Adriana, I see mm -hmm. her name Huff in blackface. It wasn't like <laughs> right. That laughter is a part of the right. problem. Right. That is so a part of the problem. Right. So you're right. It is an it is it was an indoctrination of, of European American children into what and who black people are, yep. into what these ridiculous and it go and I, I, God, I get so crazy about it because it gets even more weird or more upsetting. And we were children were being indoctrinated to believe that big lips were. Ugly and nasty and big butts and mammies and the way black people speak yeah. are, are just wrong. And it's still passed down. It is, but it only becomes right when white people deem it. When like so we've said this with Kardashians and yep. normalizing, you know, big butts. Or, mm -hmm. uh, when Angelina curves. Jolie comes on that screen with those nice, full lips. lips, yeah, because right. we got the big bubbles of watermelon eat lips i've heard that you know but oh, when she has them when a european american has them, it's she's got nice full lips and a full so it, it is it it is a it's taking away beautiful. yeah it's more than just the black face it's the story behind the the black face the narrative that it creates in society and how it affects and the impact us that it has on the other marginalized communities mm -hmm. yeah everything is white until proven black mm. wow I've it's what it feels before. like yeah Wow. It, and and it's okay. Like it's, it, I don't know. It's, I mean, think about it this way. Um, for our listeners, how would you feel if you, how would you feel if you saw one of your friends in a black in blackface? What would it, how would it impact you? Like, what feelings would it make arise? How would you feel if present? I don't want to say that because I think that would be very smart. It, to me, it is. How would you feel if non-white people created shows that? Uh, perpetuated um, what would we call them typically white white. white things white crime okay so what if there were shows where people dressed up in white face and they were like we're just gonna make shows about school shooters and how they're this yeah. and how they're that or we're gonna make shows about how I mean, uh, I'm a white outraged. man that just steals I steal retirement because these are white collar crimes. These right. are violent crimes that are predominantly done by European American people. And that white face was, and that's all we talked about. That's all we saw. And the way we saw white people or European American people, the way we, we indoctrinate our kids into you and we get a hundred years past that, you're still going to say, no, that's wrong because that made us as a whole race look like we all shot up schools. We all stole retirements. Right. We, we, we were all like near Ned Flanders like, and we all had no lips and we all, you know what I mean? Right. Like t breaking, it's about. It's putting yourself in the other person's shoes. I mean, that's basically the bottom line. If you still don't understand it, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think you need to ask yourself, what are you deriving from this? Like, what is the point? And, and mm -hmm. even if you can't understand fully what it means to someone else, just don't do it. Just don't do it. You, come, I mean, let's just tell you, hear Jackie telling you as a person, of, you know, as a black person, mm -hmm. and then as a white person, just don't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't understand it. It does, you know, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't and, do it. And this is not, you know, because you can hear a lot of people saying that the Halloween police are coming out. I mean, look, look, white people have every privilege in the world <laughs> given to us. If a black person, it's like the N word, you can't say the N word, what are the two things you can't do? Wear an Indian costume, and if that's the worst that we get, <laughs> I mean, come on, don't do it. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Now, we did bring up, this is interesting, we talked about Black Panther. I do yeah, yeah, like yeah, bring yeah, that yeah. up because we're not just talking about blackface. I'd like to talk about Halloween costumes. Yeah. Appropriate. Um, and for you guys, for, well, everyone knows what Black Panther is. Right? You know what everybody knows yeah. Black Panther is. Right. Absolutely. So we were talking, I've had two friends give me interesting feedback. I had one friend say that she would absolutely not let her son wear a Black Panther costume. Like, the, just the Black Panther costume. Um, she's white. 
Uh, and I was like, really? That's interesting to me. Um, and she said because it, she has a son that goes to pretty mixed race, but there's a lot of, you know, black children in her son's school. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, she thought about it. She's like, if this is their one superhero that they have just right, you know, right now, hopefully it gets better. Why, why should I let him that take that from him with, you know, the black children when there's a million other things my son could be? But you said you disagreed with that or you said you were fine with a white I child. disagree because in the sense of like... What you're doing is not allowing him to say that, like, black men can be strong, right. can be fierce, can be cool superheroes. Right, because her son does idolize that, which is great. Just that's like what the movie was meant to do. It was meant to do that. So that's like me telling my son, you cannot be black. You cannot, you cannot be a Batman. But I get, I oh. get the sense. I get the sense of, okay, well, let us just have our stuff. Right. That's, but what, also, that's what the argument it was. perpetuates the cycle of, of, of of the separation yeah. because all I'm seeing is a hero. Yeah. I'm seeing a super. Right. I'm, I'm no seeing a hero and I want him your to. Your son's face black, you're dressing up in a panther costume, which anyone of any race could put on a costume. Yes, and I yeah. want, I want little white boys yeah. because these are the ones. Yeah, they're the ones I want, up. look yeah, at, yes. I want little white boys to see the beauty in black people, yeah. especially Absolutely. other black, black men culture. and say, Black Panther was fierce, and he was a and great Steve king. And other, he... other than criminals, other Booyah. than drug dealers, other than rappers. Because if you think about how black men are portrayed, what do you see in media? You see a thug, a rapper, or a drug dealer. You know, so Black Panther was revolutionary, and it's sad that it's taken this long. Mm -hmm. In that sense, yeah, I, I think it does more damage than anything. Because, and I, I and I, I understand. I empathize. This is my opinion. Take it on its trash. You can take it on its treasure or throw it away. But I am of the opinion that. I want black people to be celebrated in that sense. Yeah, By all, I want to be like we. I think it's great that a new generation of kids is seeing, is having superheroes that are black or they are, of color. You're absolutely right. They have it's something exciting. that we never had. Right. I mean, that we never had on the scale that we had. Right. We have it. Right. So this is, we're charting new territory, right. especially when it comes to media and things like that. Yeah. So why would i say no no you're sure. putting you're already establishing a divide by doing yeah. that by I saying didn't even think about that don't don't you don't do that let them have their stuff the bottom line is if you're not don't paint your face like that's it don't paint his face can, black i love i never even thought about that with what you were saying with the asian you can dress up in the costume yeah you know you can wear whatever they wore but it's just not changing your race that's it there's so many other ways right right there's so many other ways like if you want to, if he wants to dress up the, and he just loves black people so much like that, then he could say, you know, a line from the movie. Right. We'll know who you are. Right. Right. In his little Black Panther costume. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to dress up as, a, in our instance, Aretha Franklin, start singing her song. Yeah, absolutely. Because if I wanted to dress up as Cher, I'm not so painting could, myself so white. So could our listener dress up as Aretha Franklin without painting her face? Yes. Because yeah. she's got so many fabulous, like, costumes and beautiful dresses and, you know, stuff like that. that yes. Can... Celebrate that woman. She right. was amazing. Right. And I think that's what the listener was saying is, like, I yeah. appreciate her. Um, and the ignorance of white people comes, though, and we think it's not harmful. It's like, oh, it's just paint. It's just, uh, And even if you're not making a caricature of, you know, you're not doing the minstrel, it's just the problem is that the history of it. The history of it. The history of it is a problem. And the impact that it still has today. Mm -hmm. Because we know that negative stereotypes abound about people of color. Mm -hmm. And the history shows that those stereotypes started somewhere. It started somewhere. And I, I will say that the, the biggest problem I have with some people in this, some European Americans in this whole issue of costume and, and blackface is that it goes back to, again, I can't just say that it's wrong without you wanting me to provide a dissertation as to why. Which has to be exhausting. Which is, it's, it's, it's unfortunate because it's... It, yeah, they're asking you to prove to them your trauma, prove prove why this is bad. And in this case, the reason why we're answering this question, it's not like that in this case. It no, is, not at all. I'm really trying to get an understanding, but you have people that was like, but why? Right. Give me the story, give me. But it's like that with so many different things, me, not just this issue. Mm -hmm. That it's so just. So white people listen to people of color when they share their experiences. Mm -hmm. and do not ask them to quantify them or qualify them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure we didn't miss anything. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had, I mean, I was just taking notes. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. I think well, we covered it. What do you guys, I, we want to hear what you guys think. Have you 
Um, and this is a space of safe space. That's why I love that she reached out to us. We don't judge. We're not no. here to. We're here to all learn and grow together. So we try to create that. But have you know? Have you dressed up like blackface, or do you know anyone that has? And how do you feel about this episode? Honestly, after you listen to it, do you understand the history better? Yeah. Um, you know, let us know. And I think too uh, the beauty. There's some beauty in taking and um, finding. Black heroes for your children. Yeah, yeah. Not that's a relevant question because I've had it come up twice, and I've had two girlfriends that have sons mm -hmm. um, talk about it. Yeah, you know, and it was just interesting to hear one say, you know, is it just wondering, is it okay? I don't know. Then the other one saying, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah. I went to realize that there are nuances. Now, it is. not painting your face black. That's that is wrong. We're <laughs> saying that. But things with Black Panther, like you said, we're in uncharted territory. Right, where there you're seeing more non-white media. Like yeah, it's, absolutely. It is socially right. acceptable. It's not, again, we're not, anything non-white is not niche. No. Yeah. And that's where we're right. getting yeah. to a point right. where it's not niche right. TV. It's right. not niche. It's, you know what I mean? Right. Which is a beautiful thing. That is. So, so how, there are some good things that are happening. There are some great yeah. things that are happening. Right. Absolutely. Right. So how do we... Find a black hero. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Black Panther, but you, I think that children should aspire to be all kinds of people. Yeah, yeah I love that. Because, you know, and, it, and why is it wrong and why do you have to second guess yourself about aspiring or enjoying and loving people that don't look right. European American? Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. Like, no, it's a beautiful not. thing. But it's exciting. It's it, exciting that a new generation of kids gets to do that mm -hmm. when we just didn't have that. Somebody rang my doorbell at home. Ding dong. I was like, what was that? <laughs> I was like, hello. <laughs> my husband will get the door, maybe, if he's home. But yeah, that is, it is okay. Yeah. So I think it's beautiful to have people that are, um, that are non-white that you feel that good enough about that you want to celebrate yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. And you can still celebrate them without... Heck, I want to dress up as Salinas. Oh, who's that? Selena! Yeah. Is it, she's like Como a la flor. Oh my god. Oh. Bum bum. You don't know that? Your neighbor's hood if she didn't you know, it. Selena? Mm -mm. Oh Is she my the goodness. one that was murdered? She was killed by okay, her. I yep. don't know her. I don't know her. Bum bum. Bum. Oh, I love Selena. But you Selena. can still dress up as her. I could dress up as Selena. I yeah. could put me, throw me on a wig and a nice outfit. Right. Jen, look, J-Lo played her in the movie. Oh, okay. I have, I have you seen the movie? Yeah, I have. Selena? Yeah. I, did, I didn't know her music. Yeah. Or maybe oh, you did I love a really her. bad rendition. You oh, have to God. know. You have to know her music. I Late draw. at night when all the world is sleeping, I stay. Oh my goodness! I know. I got. I got to expose me to I'm Selena. Good. <laughs> uh, good. So again, oh it, okay. there's nothing wrong with it. This is why we're having these conversations around yeah. what is cold, what is appropriate, yeah. what is not appropriate, yeah. and not. It is okay to celebrate without saying we're the one yeah we can celebrate without appropriating can yeah. we do that we can we can do that and I say that so. it wasn't it wasn't yeah. it wasn't you didn't have no because we want you to love different cultures and music and because that is the to me beauty of america that is the beauty there's of just the right way to the wrong way to do it yeah. yeah and if you're not sure you can email us you can message us so but we don't know it all no we don't, so don't, don't. we're trying we'll but reach we out. love when you guys message us yeah, we will do not, we will do whole episodes based on questions you ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're very accessible. Yes. Yeah. This is true. Okay, so. so what's our so what now what? So what now what? Well, I mean I say that a lot of the same things, but history. Yeah. Um I don't realize see your face. Okay, realize that if you are not <laughs> Oh no, I was doing her face. <laughs> <laughs> um so realize if you um don't you feel like you don't have to study history that is white privilege yeah. if that makes you uncomfortable I'm sorry um, but don't get defense and then my other would be listen to people of color when they tell you here's the thing when they tell you this impacts me this is even if you don't get it because I know a lot of white people just won't get it you don't have to get it if if someone of color is telling you that what you are doing or your action is offensive to them accept it yeah that's my so what. You made me think of something in saying that, but yeah. um, my, and I will say it, I'll say it after I do my so what, you yeah. know what, but um, so what, um, 
there's nothing right about blackface. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was meant to be funny. It is funny. Not literally, but it is. It was meant to be funny. Right. And um, if you do it nowadays, it will be funny, but not in a ha-ha-ha way. Um, yeah. There's some very real, you can chance it, do it. There's some very real consequences. Real repercussions. No, but I'm just saying, there's a consequence for everything, and you, you have a right to choice. People do. Um, but I would just say, from my purview of the world, it is attached to so many different negative things associated with um, black or African American, whatever you want to say, people. Like it, it is layered. It is layered with what, even how we see ourselves in media recently, right. even you know, and how our children um, see us and our bodies. It's so much more than just a face. So know that that history is attached to the face. Um, that the black face is attached to the body. Yeah which is attached to a lot of stereotypes and um that are still hurtful yep still hurtful yeah. yep can we just be us right and love each other but what i was going to say is you made me think of i would i was thinking like would i want and this is maybe extreme would i want a um a person who uh yeah this is extreme it's almost like people telling, like I'm thinking about like the Me Too movement mm -hmm. and how people, are, it's like a guy who has been a harasser telling me what's, what is or is not harassing. Mm, good analogy. Do you yes. know what I mean? Like, like I've gotten that, so I can relate to that in the sense of like, well, it was just a compliment. You're, you are beautiful. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, you're making me feel uncomfortable <laughs> yes. because I've had that exact same thing happen where someone hit on. But you're beautiful. You should take it as a compliment, and it's the okay. same thing. It, that's a great analogy. Yeah. You're like, I'm telling you, this is offensive. Yeah. It does not matter what you think, and it does not matter that you don't get it. This is offensive. This is offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Analogy. It's yeah. That's the way it I feels. I think that like, can bring it home for some, at least women for sure. For women, yeah, yeah women for sure. That is because I've been there a million times. Yeah, don't tell. You can't. Like, really you're making me uncomfortable. This is. I have the right to speak up, so I will. Yeah, I will. Have to understand it. Yeah, you don't. You don't. And, and you wrong. don't get to build the lines to tell me what yeah, makes that's me. That's not you. You were. I was like, what is she? No, it's that's not over the top. No, I was kind of. Great analogy. No, I'm like, do, do you relate this to sexual assault? Absolutely. But but it really is kind of or the same of any kind. Of, of any yeah. kind. It just not you know, believing the person that's being that's being hurt. Yeah, which but you we tend to do a lot. We don't believe our marginalized or victims. No, or survivors. it says get get over it. Yeah, I don't like that. No, nope, we're not about that in your neighborhood. No, nope, not at all. I I can't. It's nope. a part of history, and let's stay. Let's stay close to history, yes, as absolutely. close as we can, yes. so that we cannot repeat we the same. We almost bring history to every le to everything, which I like. Hopefully, you're learning something. Cause I am uh, researching. You should just sing it, girl. Every episode. We're learning. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thank you guys for listening. I yes. think that's winter, so what? Now what? So. I hope you guys have a fun and safe Halloween. Yeah. There's a million <laughs> other things to be. <laughs> so have fun. All right. Make it a great day. And stay curious. Always. Out. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, it's Jackie. Oh, and Christina. <laughs> um, please like, review, and subscribe to our podcast. This is what, and it's saying just like this. Yeah. But I, I she's but we're one in the same because we're yeah. your neighbors. We are. Yes, like, subscribe, review. Yes, we can't underestimate. That helps us. And we yeah. do. So if you love our podcast, leave us a review. Yeah, we need it. Please do. We really do. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye.